Hello and welcome to a new video with the electric trucker. Today we're taking a look at Germany's first fully electric ship at the Friesia Shipping Company in Norddeich, way up northwest in Germany. I'm Stefan, the captain of this fully electric catamaran. I've been at Friesia since 2017 and this is the first ship I've been able to follow from the very beginning of its construction. It's brand new and hasn't carried a single passenger yet. The ship is 32.3 meters long, 9.9 .9 meters wide, has a draft of 1.2 meters when fully loaded, and can carry 150 passengers. The ship was built in the Netherlands near Rotterdam from 2024 to 2025. It will operate on the route from Noordijk to Noordeny, and that's about 5 nautical miles per trip, so 10 nautical miles round trip, or roughly 18.5 kilometers, or 11.5 miles. This is the bridge, and here's my seat. Up front there is a bit of navigation equipment, but the interesting part is the battery display on the right side. We have a total of 180 batteries on this ship, 90 on each hull side. These 90 batteries per side are connected into six strings of 15 batteries each. Each battery has a capacity of 10 kilowatt hours, so in total we have 1,800 kilowatt hours. We can see that they are at 34% state of charge. At the top, you can also see the state of health of the batteries. There's no range estimate, so we have to gain that knowledge through experience over the coming months. We always charge up to 85% and we're not allowed to go beyond that to protect the battery. If we sail our route at full speed, we usually return with about 35 to 40% remaining, depending on the weather. Then we plug in and recharge to 85% in around 28 minutes. Factors that influence consumption include passenger load, the current, since tidal flows in the Wadden Sea can be strong, and of course, headwinds or tailwinds. Wave action isn't a major factor, partly because this is a catamaran. Unlike electric cars or trucks, the ship can't regenerate energy. Maybe that'll become possible in the future, but for now, we're just glad the ship exists and everything works. In the passenger area, there are USB and USB-C sockets everywhere, and now we're going to take a look into one of the catamaran's hulls to see how the batteries are installed. We're now in one of the hulls, and here you can see the battery packs. Each pack stores 10 kilowatt hours, and there are six stacked on top of each other. These are NMC batteries, and 15 of them are connected in series, color-coded for clarity. The other side of the ship is mirrored and looks exactly the same. Each battery weighs 85 kilograms, but can be removed and replaced at any time. All batteries, including their mounting frames, weigh 17.5 tons, about the same as a diesel engine with a full tank. Each battery has its own fan on top, and the battery rooms are both cooled and heated by an air conditioning system. It can be monitored and controlled via smartphone, which is important because the batteries need to operate between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. Regarding fire safety, the batteries themselves don't actually catch fire, they just emit smoke. That's why we only have CO2 fire extinguishers at the front and rear. The batteries are enclosed at the rear end with a rupture disc. If a battery emits smoke, the disc bursts and all the smoke goes into a collection duct. There's an opening between the hulls of the ship and the smoke is simply vented out. So the fire safety is well thought through and nothing dangerous can happen. And if one side of the ship fails, the ship can still operate using the other side because both sides can operate independently from each other. We're now in the engine room. It has the exact same control screen as on the bridge, allowing us to operate the system from here as well. You can choose different modes and view power consumption. At full throttle, it's about 620 kilowatts, but that will drain the battery much faster than when cruising at 50 kilowatts. When the ship came over from Holland, we did the last 25 nautical miles without a tugboat. If we had sailed at 620 kilowatts, we would have arrived with an empty battery, but at 50 kilowatts, we can cover up to 150 nautical miles on the same charge, so slower speeds make a huge difference in range on this vessel. And this is our 600 kilowatt drive motor. Directly attached to it is the clutch and gearbox. Other than that, there is just a lot of tech and power cables everywhere. We're back outside and this is the pontoon where passengers board. Basically a floating waiting area. And over there is the second pontoon, which houses the charging equipment. The shore power comes from the power lines up there. Friesia also operates its own 1.7 megawatt solar system, which can directly supply the ship. The transformer isn't on land, but installed here on this pontoon because the entire area is a flood zone. That makes a floating setup actually safer than placing a transformer on land. Let's take a quick look inside the transformer. It receives 20,000 volts from the land grid and charges the ship at 1,800 kilowatts. This transformer and pontoon setup was built specifically for this ship. So, shipbuilding industry, take note. In the future, there's a lot of work to be done. It's not just about building ships, but also about designing floating transformer stations. The whole system is completely insulated for fire protection and there are water sensors installed on the ground. If even a small amount of water enters, an alarm is triggered. And if the water level rises too much, the entire system shuts down. Now we're standing outside of the charging tower. From the transformer, the cable runs up into the tower and the plugs come out here. We've got two MCS plugs for 900 kilowatts each. 
One of the MCS plugs is already connected. You just take the cable and plug it in, pretty much like charging a car. We've plugged in the connectors, and now all I need to do is press start on the fast charger. It then runs a check to make sure all the locks are properly engaged and that the batteries are in the right condition. On the screen, the left side shows the batteries on the left side of the ship, the right side shows the right, and the center gives you a combined overview. Now the transformer is slowly ramping up. It takes a few seconds, and then the power steadily increases. And 210 kilowatt hours is the buffer that isn't used. At 296 kilowatt hours, it reduces the power, and no more than 1,550 kilowatt hours can go in. Right now, it's only charging with 300 kilowatts on both sides, but we can adjust that individually, and then it ramps up to over 800 kilowatts. Modern ships are built to last at least 20 years, and if you want the ship to last that long, you should start thinking from day one about how to maximize the battery lifespan, especially since the battery warranty only covers 10 years. In April, May and June, we have a relatively light schedule. We run three trips a day and always have a 90 minute break between departures to charge. In July and August, we have six or seven trips per day. Then we only have 30 minutes between trips, but that's always enough for fast charging. It's really impressive to see something like this in regular operation here in Germany. Stefan, thank you for the insights. And if you want to try it out yourself, come to Nordijk and take a day trip to Norderney. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.